Welcome back to another blazing hot weekend here in New Zealand. Now in this vlog, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the scanning kit I'm using this year because it is different to what I've used before. You guys, if you've watched some of the previous vlogs, will have seen me scanning cows back in Northumberland. I also took the scanner up to go and compare some notes with Ryan up in the Highlands where we went scanning Highland cows. If you haven't seen those videos, feel free to go and take a look. But the reason I'm showing you this kit is because the scanning here is actually remarkably different to the scanning at home and the kit reflects that. First things first though, we need a kit. That's better. Now this is actually an older model. A lot of it is very similar to what I've been using, what you would have seen me using or perhaps your own vet or if you're a vet, what you've been using yourself. Um, so I'll focus on what's different. Now this is a BCF and it's one of the earlier models so it looks a bit blockier but really this is probably one of the first iterations of the easy scan. So yeah, there we go, BCF, good old blue and yellow livery. So I wonder if this is an easy scan one. A lot of vets in the UK were using an easy scan three or four, and if not an easy scan go, which is the next model. So there we go, we have the box here. It's pretty self-explanatory what it does. This battery would clip in underneath that box. You can see those clips. We have the goggles called bugs. I'm not gonna connect those, but you can see that's where it connects into that little display part on the box there. Pop that back. And then of course, this box feeds down the cord into the probe, which has been reinforced a couple of times. And this, again, just little things, it's great to pick up. So this is what this practice calls a Snuggie. I think it's just a towel taped up, but it protects the probe, which is this part. Now this is the most delicate and also probably most important part of the whole machine. This is a linear probe. You can see this is really exactly the same type of scanner we could use in the UK because it's got that little ridge for sticking a finger in there. Now they don't use the hands here. I'll get onto that in a second. As I say, this is the most delicate and important part of the whole machine because within there, I believe, is the piezoelectric crystals and that's what generates the ultrasound waves. Now you're not here for a physics lesson, so we'll leave it there. This very delicate part can be uh, protected really nicely by having it tucked up when it's not obviously not in use uh, in this little snuggy, And that would be on a par with Ryan in the Highlands using a child's croc to put his probe in. But yeah, you can see that there's a probe and then it links back into the machine, which gives it its power. That both generates and receives the ultrasound waves. And that gives you your image in your goggles or if you're using one, a screen. And now this is where it really starts to diverge from what we do in the UK. And some of you will have spotted this already. This, let's get a wider focus. This is an introducer. And now I have seen one of these before, funnily enough, because in my first job, I worked with a Kiwi locum and he actually got the practice to buy one of these for him. And when it arrived, we all thought he was pretty nuts and so did the farmers until they saw it in use. And once they'd seen it, there was no going back. And you can sort of get the picture. Like I said, the vets here, they wouldn't have the probe in their hand like I would and insert it rectally. Instead, what they'll do, they'll have the probe in here and then using the introducer, they'll introduce the probe and have the readout from their goggles there. So I'll just show you how that fits in. So this goes up through there, nice and carefully. And that goes through there. And you can see that sort of slots, hopefully in there and then we gently push that in. But like I say, this is the delicate part, so it's all about being fairly gentle with it. Now, see that's in there? So that's our probe. We just pop that cord into the little ridge here. So that's nice and tucked out of the way. It's not gonna get caught on anything. And yes, that comes out down here. So what would happen is that box you saw before with this battery attached, that would be in a rucksack on my back. This cord would then feed in over my shoulder to have the goggles on and I would be introducing the probe with my right hand. If I needed ever to um, pop a hand in, say to check if she's empty or to pull the uterus back up, sometimes you need to do if it's sagged down right into her abdomen. I'd use my left hand, have that gloved up obviously, and then you can adjust where you are. Um, you can keep this arm dirty and in theory, 
this hand and arm clean. Now that's worked out some places for me and other places I've just still got completely covered. Now in the next few weeks, I promise we'll get out onto some farms and you'll see me using this in action. But I thought it was cool enough and different enough to warrant its own video because some of you guys will have seen this, some of you not at all. Um, and it's one of those things I haven't really seen a non-Kiwi used one. There might be some guys up in North America maybe. There is an entire machine you can get, which is actually a sector scanner, made also made by BCF, where this is all built in, it's all one piece. Now, because that's a sector scanner, not a linear scanner, that's actually quite a different machine. But I suppose the same principle goes in that you're not putting your whole arm in, you're simply putting the probe in. That one actually looks pretty scary. It's like a medieval battle weapon or something. Now, you might be asking why on earth do the Kiwis do this? They're just trying to be difficult. I'll quickly put this away and then I'll explain. So, why do the Kiwis use these introducers? Well, again, it feeds back into the way they do their farming. The dairy farming here, like you've heard me say before, very seasonal and it's got big scale. So that means there'll be a couple of months where everyone's really doing the same jobs and then they won't do that job again for, say, another nine months. That also means the numbers of each job they're doing end up being very large. Compare that to say a UK dairy farm, most UK dairy farms are all year round calving. That means they've got a constant steady trickle of pregnant cows that need scanning. They need PD or pregnancy diagnosed. Now that means the vet's often there every week or every couple of weeks to do what they call a routine fertility visit. Contrast that to the New Zealand system where really all the cows are mated in November and December. That means all the cows are then scanned in January, February in a big lot. Now, depending on the farm, they might just do one scan. They might do an early scan like we're sort of doing now followed by a late scan to try and pick up on some rechecks. And then they might, if they're paying a lot for wintering, do a yes, no scan before cows are moved onto a winter forage crop to make sure they're not carrying a dry cow through the winter. So coming back to the veterinary side of it, that means as vets, the guys here are presented with a very large number of cows to scan over a very condensed period. And just like with other jobs, that means they often go to a morning or an afternoon milking on a rotary parlor, just like you saw me doing with the metric checking in another video. The vet is scanning a lot of cows and they're having to do it very quickly. If you were to do all of those cows so quickly with your arm, A, I think it'd simply be difficult to get your arm in quick enough on a rotary parlor as the cows are coming around. And after about the first 50, your arm is going to fall off. And in all seriousness, after a few years of doing that every summer, you're probably going to pick up some injuries in your rectaling arm. That's no good for anyone. So that's where the introducer comes in, I think. There might be another reason for it, but really it's to reduce wear and tear on the vet and make things easier, quicker, on the day. One other advantage of this is that it should make it easier to scan cows in a race as well without getting them all individually um, in a head bale. Like I say, we'll get some videos out on farm scanning. I am definitely there as a learner. There's actually only a handful of experienced scanners on. There's probably just as many learners. Now, for a vet with a few years experience like myself, I've scanned plenty of cows, but really this is a totally different ball game. Going out with some of these Kiwi scanners really has been somewhat of a humbling experience, but that's why I'm here, here in New Zealand to leave my comfort zone, to learn some new things, which may or may not be useful back at home if they are fantastic. If not, again, I still think there's something to be said for leaving that comfort zone and simply learning how to learn again. I've got a few scanning jobs lined up over the next couple of weeks. We'll get some footage there. But like I said, I thought it'd be worth doing a video just to show you this setup and explain why we're using it. So stay tuned for that one. I'll see you for a technical later in the week. In the meantime, look after yourself. And if you're in Britain, enjoy the lovely winter weather. All right, folks, 